Today I'm going to be sharing why I'm switching hosting from SiteGround over to WPX. And this is one of the most common questions I get asked, which is, which hosting do you use? And bear in mind, it's a bit different if you've got an AI SEO website, because if you're creating a lot of content with AI and ChatGPT, then the problem is that your website is going to become absolutely massive very quickly. So let me explain the difference, right? First of all, differences with AI sites versus traditional sites is that you're going to be taking up a lot of storage because you're creating hundreds, if not thousands of pages. Whereas before you might only have a website that's like 50 or hundred pages. Additionally, you're going to have lots of images, which again, will take up a lot of storage because you've got all these AI generated images. For example, like this page you can see right here. And this creates a problem because it uses up something called inode quota. Now, interestingly, if you buy like a hosting plan, typically you won't see anything about inodes. So each time you create a file on your website, you're creating an inode. And most hosting services have a limit on the number of inodes. So if you exceed that limit, then your website gets taken down or you have to upgrade. Now, what you can see quite a few times happening in May and June, so it's happening pretty much every month, was that my websites would all get taken down on the SiteGround hosting plan because I had too many images and too many inodes exceeding the limit. And unless I upgraded and paid more for the plan, I couldn't use my websites, which I paid for. So it was a bit of a nightmare. My own fault, obviously, but it's just something you have to live and learn from. And that's one of the reasons I've switched to WPX as well. And it's not something you're typically going to consider when you're starting up a new site. So this can lead to more costs. And of course, with your AI website, you want it to load really fast because that's going to improve on page metrics like any website. But the thing is, the SiteGround was okay, but it was not as fast as WPX. WPX is a lot faster. Additionally, when you can create so many posts with AI, you know, whether it's AI WiseMind, that's kind of like an auto blogger, or you've seen some of the make.com tools I've used for free. Additionally, if you've seen some of the websites I've created with auto blogging as well, it's very easy to create a brand new website with AI and SEO, and they will actually rank. But the problem is the more websites you have, the more storage you take up, and the more your costs are going to increase as well. So you have to be careful about that too. So I've migrated Chipper Birds already. And Mediavine is already running on the website, which is perfect. One of the things I was a bit worried about with this website was that if I do migrate it, is it going to keep on the same momentum? Is it going to keep ranking? And then the core update happened as well. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's a total nightmare. But actually the migration is nice because you don't get any downtime, right? So essentially we migrated on the 24th of August, as you can see here, and pretty much the same day. The website migration was completed. You just change your name server. So I'm on Namecheap and I just set up the name service on Namecheap like that. And the cool thing is your website doesn't go down at all. So you actually don't lose any traffic simply because during the migration process, they handle it all. It all gets transferred and then you change the name servers afterwards. So it's pretty smooth. Would recommend. Cost me $500 for the professional package for the whole year, which is pretty reasonable. It's pretty much the same price as SiteGround, honestly, but the thing is with SiteGround, I was constantly using up all my space. They were taking my websites down. I was losing traffic. They were trying to overcharge me, etc. And the problem is as well with SiteGround, it's like you get a really good rate for the first year. And then after that, they don't really reward you for sticking around. You, on the second year and after that, you get charged more and more and more, which I understand because you're kind of locked in and you just get a beginner's year. But at the same time, you get charged like 80% more on your second year or whatever. Now, what we can also do is compare the before and after of PageSpeed Insights, right? So we've got the same page here, and this was before the migration. Obviously, this is today after the migration. And we can see that both websites passed Core Web Vitals assessment, which is perfect. This is on desktop, by the way. And if you compare the results, previously it was 55 for performance. Now it is 79. Accessibility is the same. Best practices is the same. And the SEO score was actually higher previously. I'm not sure why that is. But essentially, the performance is much higher versus previous. And looks like there's an error with the indexing. I've got to check that out myself, actually, afterwards. I'm glad I made this video. But if we compare the performance side by side, so previously, the first contentful paint was 12.6 seconds. Now it is 1.8 seconds. I'm not even going to pretend that I know what these mean. But basically, these were in the red previously. And now it's still in the red, but it seems to be a lot faster than previous. So 12 seconds versus 1.8 seconds. And then the speed index is much faster as well. So it's 1.8 seconds now. Previously, it was 13 seconds before the migration. So the website is definitely faster. Let's check out what these actually mean. Okay, so basically these are metrics used to measure how quickly content appears on the screen 
when a user visits the web page, right? So these have improved and they've become a lot quicker. They're still amber and red, which is not amazing, but definitely better than they were previously, as you can see. And the first content full paint is how long it takes for the first bit of content to be displayed on the screen. So it could be like your text, images, or background color. Largest content full paint is basically how long it takes for the largest piece of content, the largest element for content to be displayed on the screen. So for example, images, videos, or a block of text that take up a significant amount of the real estate on the website. That makes sense. So for example, it could be your main header image. So that basically grades how quick your website loads. This is the first piece of content. This is the largest piece of content. And they load within a couple of seconds. So that's basically it. That's why I upgraded to WPX. It should allow me to create more websites. It gives me more storage. I've not had any problems with iNode. With the migration, there was no downtime. And it seems to be faster as well. One final thing I want to say is that if you do run ads on your website, just be careful after you've migrated. Simply because for us, we had to let Mediavine know. Otherwise, it might stop displaying on the new website. I think there's a few technical changes that, for example, Mediavine have to do with our website ads. So just be careful of that. Obviously, switching hosts is like a really big thing. So I was glad to just get it over pretty quickly in one week. That was awesome. And I have absolutely no incentive to promote WPX. I just wanted to show you what's working for me and why I did it, etc. So thanks so much for watching. If you want my free AI SEO course, you can get that in the comments. I'll leave a link. And if you want a free call where we can discuss how to get more leads, traffic and sales to your website, then feel free to book in a call. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.